All right, so in a couple days from now, Global will be getting a brand new Extreme Z battle event that will allow us to Extreme Z awaken four of the old Dragon Ball Fusions units, specifically the Tech Karoli, the STR Bullpan, or sorry, no, uh, STR Barlot, AGL Bullpan, and also the Int and Dell. Now, personally, this is something that I've been kind of looking forward to, mainly because these units are uh, pretty useless by today's standards. Not to say they're unusable, but there's just no real reason to use them unless you're a very new player without a lot of options, right? So in today's video, we're going to be going over uh, the details for their Extreme Z battle event and also talking about the uh, EZA details for each of the units. So starting here with the Extreme Z battle event, the release date for Global is not listed here, but it should be February 7th, 2022. So in about three days from now, the weakness is the crossover category. And as we go through the stages, you'll see it's pretty much like any other standard Extreme Z battle event. For every stage, you'll be getting one Dragonstone. You're also going to be getting the Extreme Z Awakening medals for all four units, starting with the bronze medals, and then moving on to the silver medals, the gold medals, and finally, the rainbow medals. And in terms of the enemies, we're starting with the Int Pendel, and then after level 7, it's going to switch over to the AGL Bullpan, and then from level 15 onwards, it's going to be the uh, STR Barlot, and then after level 22, it becomes the Tech Karoli. And in terms of the damage reduction, obviously there is increasing damage reduction as you go along. But after level 15, there's going to be additional damage reduction of 80% against all STR type units. So essentially, you want to make sure that you don't include any STR units on your team after level 15 because they're just not going to really be able to do any real damage, right? So that's uh, all there really is to it. 30 levels, after you complete the first 30 levels, you'll get a bunch of Dragonstones, you get a bunch of orbs, all the medals you need to fully Extreme Z Awaken all four units, and also a uh, few Kai's along the way. So taking a look at these rewards here, we get, yeah, 30 stones. We got these orbs right here of all types. Actually, no Fizz orbs, since uh, there's no Fizz unit getting Extreme Z Awakening. So you get some AGL orbs, some Tech orbs, some Int orbs, and some SDR orbs. These are the Extreme Z Awakening medals, and also you get three Grand Kai's of uh, each type minus Fizz once again. And we also have some missions here which can be repeated four times, once for each of the characters. So if you perform step one of their Extreme Z Awakening, you'll get a Gold Hercule statue. And for step seven, which is the last step, you'll get a Dragonstone. So if you do this for all four units, then you'll get four additional Dragonstones for a total of 34 Dragonstones for the entire event. And uh, here is the crossover category. Obviously, I'm not going to go over all the units, but uh, you do have quite a few options here. And just make sure to not include any of the STR units after level uh, 15. And you should be good to go. I believe that any decent crossover team uh, should be able to get it done. But if you don't have enough units to build a full crossover team, then you could maybe try to use a type advantage mono team. Like for example, against the uh, Barlot, you would use an AGL team. Against the Broly, you would obviously use an Int team. And that could work, but I'm not 100% sure. Because obviously the intent here, the idea is that they want you to uh, summon four specific units to be able to beat these Extreme Z battles, right? So um, it's worth a shot for sure. And uh, that is basically the Extreme Z battle event for the uh, Dragon Ball Fusions units. Now, let's move on to the units themselves now, starting with the Tech Karoli. Now, before his Extreme Z Awakening, his leader skill is Tech Types, Attack and Defense, plus 70%, Super Attack, Supreme Damage, and Rare Chance to stun the enemy, and Passive is Attack plus 80% at the start of the turn. So not much going on here no defense whatsoever terrible leader skill uh, like i said just not very useful at all 
Now, with the Extreme Z Awakening, new leader skill is Tech Type Q plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 100%, super attack, supreme damage with a high chance of stunning the enemy, and passive is attack and defense plus 260%, launches an additional attack that has a great chance of becoming a super attack. And as most of you guys know, great chance is a 70% chance, so basically most of the time, this guy's gonna be launching double supers, an attack plus 59% when the target enemy is stunned. And this additional 59% is calculated separately, so um, when the enemy is stunned, he's actually getting a total attack boost of 472.4%, which is pretty wild. And uh, as far as his stats go, after the Extreme Z Awakening, he gets up to 17,212 HP, 15,000. 957 attack and 10,143 defense. So to go from just 80% attack to 260% attack and defense is a massive, massive boost. And then there's the additional super attack and then also another massive attack boost if the target enemy is stunned which uh, is likely considering he has a high chance to stun and he's launching multiple supers. So if you're on Super Battle Road, for example, then chances are you're going to have a stunned enemy. So he's going to be getting that additional attack boost fairly regularly on events where the enemy can be stunned, right? So that is the Karoli, I would say, you know, pretty simple Extreme Z Awakening, but very impressive nonetheless. Now from there, we're going to move on to the... STR Barlot. Leader skill is STR type skill plus 3, attack and defense plus 70% when HP is 30% or above. Of course, this is before the Extreme Z Awakening. Super attack greatly raises attack for one turn and causes supreme damage. And passive attack plus 15% and defense plus 10% for a key sphere obtained. Now, with the Extreme Z Awakening, new leader skill is STR type skill plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 100%, super attack greatly raises attack and defense for one turn and causes supreme damage and passive is randomly changes key spheres of a certain type str excluded to str key spheres attack and defense plus 30 percent per key sphere obtained plus an additional attack and defense plus 30 percent and chance of performing a critical hit plus 15 percent with three or more key spheres obtained high chance of launching an additional super attack with five or more key spheres obtained plus an additional attack and defense plus 30% and chance of performing a critical hit plus 15% with seven or more key spheres obtained. So uh, a lot of stuff going on here, but the point is he's a very, very good nuker and he's also an orb changer, which means that it's gonna be very easy for him to get a good amount of key spheres every single turn. So activating his full passive shouldn't be that difficult. Now, obviously, you're not going to be getting seven key spheres every turn, but I think five is uh, pretty reasonable to expect. And with just five key spheres, he's going to be getting close to 200% attack and defense, a 15% chance to crit, and also a 50% chance for an additional super attack. And obviously, the attack and defense boost will go higher with more key spheres. And uh, with seven key spheres, there's the additional attack and defense plus 30%, and also another 15% chance to crit. So just a great nuking unit. Um, he should be hitting pretty hard, should be getting a respectable amount of defense. And taking a look at his stats here, uh, he's getting up to 17,064 HP, 16,225 attack, and 10,659 defense. So that's the SDR Barlot. Now, we got the AGL bullpen here, leader skill before the EZA, AGL types, HP and defense, plus 70%, spur attack, supreme damage, and passive. All allies keep plus 3 when HP is 30% or above. Now, with the EZA, leader skill is AGL types, keep plus 3, HP attack and defense, plus 100%, super attack, raises attack and defense for one turn and causes supreme damage. And passive is attack and defense plus 150% plus an additional attack and defense plus 30% with each fusion category ally attacking on the same turn, self excluded, so up to additional 60% here. All allies keep plus 3 when HP is 30% or above, and then a high chance of attacks being effective against all types and high chance of guarding all attacks. And then her stats. 
will be at max 16,160 HP, 15,111 attack, and 11,405 defense. So there's the bullpen. And finally, we have the uh, Int Pendel. Old leader skill or pre EZA leader skill. Int types key plus 3. Sorry, no key. Int types HP and defense plus 70%. Super attack supreme damage and passive is attack plus 30% for all allies. With the EZA, new leader skill, int types key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 100%, super attack supreme damage and lowers attack and defense, and passive is attack and defense plus 150%, all allies attack and defense plus 30%, plus an additional attack and defense plus 10%, and chance of evading enemies' attacks, including super attacks, plus 7% per fusion category ally on the team. So if you have a full fusions team, that's gonna be 49% more attack and defense, and also, sorry, no, 70% more attack and defense, and also 49% chance to dodge, which is essentially a high chance to dodge. And so at rainbow status, with the EZA, their stats will go up to 16,248 HP, 15,211 attack, and 11,100 and 30 defense. So there you go, guys. Clearly, the Pendel and the uh, Bullpen are more geared towards support slash defense, whereas the uh, Barla and the Caroli are going to be more offensive units and also still getting some good defense, just uh, not as supportive as the other two. So um, that's it, guys. That's the video. The Extreme Z Battle event is dropping in about three days from now. Um, I'm pretty excited to run this new crossover team with the addition of these four EZAs. Should definitely be a good time. But yeah, that's all I gotta say. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. Sub to the channel if you're new. Hit that notification bell so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And until next time, have an awesome, awesome day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.